Hello, welcome. You're watching NewsX. I'm Rishabh Gulati. The stuff we live on, the air, water, and food. The quintessential definition of what it takes to survive as a human being. India has a long tradition of not only cooking for yourself, but cooking for families, communities, and the food industry in this country is so large that it is the single largest employer across the nation. There are small restaurants in the tune of lakhs across the nation. And every time we eat out or order some food, we are doing it on the premise that those who are cooking it for us are doing so with the same tenacity, sense of purpose and hygiene as if they were cooking it for themselves. We have community kitchens that process thousands of meals. We have street vendors that feed millions safely across the country. But ever so often we see not anecdotal, not one-off, but a pattern of events that makes us wake up and realize that there is something that has slipped into the cracks. Such is a case that has now developed in Kerala, where a young woman is now dead. She was just 90 years old. After a certain kind of bacterial poisoning in Castle Gore from eating out. The Kerala authorities have subsequently raided 400 restaurants and they've issued notices for the shutting down of 26 of them for unsanitary and unhygienic conditions. That is just 400 in what can be lakhs. Now there are two things we need to achieve here. Number one, we need to look through a microscope because every single time somebody eats out, they are putting their trust and faith in someone else. For millions of people who eat out every day, that is justified. I don't want to create panic, but at the same time we can't ignore not one but now two deaths that have taken place. So let's open up this telecast and try to have a sensible conversation on what needs to be getting done because for the family of this girl, the pain and anguish is difficult to explain. You just step out for a meal and then you die of a loathsome bacteria. Dr. Isha Gilada joining us on the broadcast. He is a infectious disease specialist, Dr. Vivek Gupta. He is a cardiologist from Apollo and Ashok uh, Kushmuk Kumar ji is a general secretary of consumer rights. We did try to reach out to a lot of restauranters for obvious reason. This time they have chosen not to partake. Do, do, Dr. Gupta, in, in your experience, uh, Vivek ji if you can hear me, Dr. Gupta, in your yeah, experience, you know, and, and this happens in every family, all of us have at some point of time food poisoning, it's part of life, okay. But to reach a point of fatality, where we have not been able to figure out what is happening con considering that several people in the family have shared the same meal because generally my, my judgment on food poisoning is that if you know if all of us are eating the same thing in the same restaurant or the same thing if more than one person is showing discomfort that means that it was the food that was the problem not some other some other thing but how, how often do you see people who have fatality due to literally poisoning I think it's uh, really sad and uh, I personally I have never seen a single death because of food poisoning. It can happen in elderly situations, especially when they have having immunocompromised status. In the patient who is young, 20 year old, and two other people who have not, who had also consumed the same food, had only mild symptoms. My perception of this whole case will be that she was hospitalized, she required uh, fluids, intravenous fluids, and she required antibiotics. Whether it was bacteria or virus or some toxin because of bacteria, because it was the food which has caused the poisoning, causing, leading to nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, which are the common symptoms and normally subsides on its own, does not require hospitalization itself. In this particular case where the patient was hospitalized and continued to be hospitalized for seven days, 
So she finally, uh, she, we could not save her. So my perception of the case would be that this must be, she must be a little bit more compromised person. Okay, we, we don't know the case history, but but in your in your in your professional expertise, uh, Doctor Gupta, uh, in general cases, is it because it's 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 a parasite or a bacteria or a virus, or should we also look at foreign as in some kind of substance poisoning? Because that can also happen. Does that happen, or is generally some some sort of uh, parasite or, or or bacteria? It's more only bacteria and virus and some toxins or some parasites uh, which are more uncommon. Uh, I have personally feel that they, I have never seen a single death in this and I am very much surprised myself when the patient was, she was hospitalized. Uh, why should she really got infection because sepsis means infection. She had generalized infection and which could not be controlled and finally multi-organ failure and she died. Yeah, so it, became, it, became, it became, became serious because yeah, you have a generalized, it's, you know, you have septicemia for people watching become like blood poisoning. Then every organ becomes infected and then multiple organ failure is the cause of death. And, okay. And absolutely rare. In a young person, absolutely rare to, we don't know the actual case history. There must be some precipitating factors in her because despite being hospitalization, doctors must have done the best, despite being antibiotic, fluids, must have been given. Suppose she was in remote area where she was not treated well, then such fatality can be, still be accepted. But in a place where she was hospitalized, I'm sure she must have been given. Yeah, she to the hospital in Bengaluru when her condition worsened, but you know, sometimes by the time her condition worsened, it's too late. Okay, so let me let me get uh, Kumar will try to get back in. But but Dr. Gupta, then you know what do you make of these raids and these restaurant closures? Because uh, two women now in Kerala have died in just the course of the past few weeks. The restaurant in our own country. The I I'd say that there is no doubt that the hygiene component in most of the restaurant in our country, small restaurant especially, is not adequate. I always tell my children, all my friends, that they should not eat outside because you see, they are not not only smoking part, it's also cleaning, especially the uh, non-vegetarian part. It's also I'm a vegetarian. I never ask my children to do that. But in, especially the non-vegetarian food is more unhygienic than vegetarian food. I personally feel that this is not an eye wash. This is actually important, and such rates will actually give up a sort of idea that you can't take people for granted. You have to have more number of cooks, you have to have gloves wearing these people who are cooking the food, using the gloves, they have to be more careful in giving the food which supply. Whatever they take precautions for their own food, they should be given also, they should take the same precaution for people, public when they are serving the food. So this raid I is a welcome move. Although sometimes you uh, the people who are actually doing good work they also get caught. So I'm not saying that. But personally I feel that this requires lot of attention. And a lot of people, especially young people, are eating so much outside. The whole food is not good for them. They want to take every, every time it's all these because the people who are serving Zomato and all the home delivery is so quick eh, that most of the people, I would say, uh, yeah. But, but the, the converse argument also applies, Doctor Gilad. I think I think he's roaming uh, roaming outside. The network might not be might not might not be stable. So, Doctor Doctor Gupta, just to just to wind up this conversation, uh, the same question I asked Doctor Gilada: Is there a systemic now problem which is emerging which requires a concerted larger action plan or is this part and parcel of the risks of, of, of daily life what should we do is my question should we do something about it other than what has been done uh, or do we need a surgical response what do we do it what do we do I, I think first of all what you did this program I congratulate you and uh, really commend you that you have taken this program this is very important because more number of people and thousands and millions of people are eating outside these days and hygiene complement is absolutely, I would say, if you 0 to 10, it will be not more than 3. So I personally feel most of, and secondly, my observation is that 90% to 70% people will have some sort of infection which goes away within few hours of you, within 24 hours to 48 hours. I will get infection when I eat outside most of the time. But of course, the serious infections are rare. But that does not mean that it, 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 we can take it for granted. We have to have a national policy. We have to have a FDA food and drug administration. This department should be more proactive. They should do surveillance of the market. They should do surveillance of these shops okay. more often than what they are okay. doing. Okay, so let's just, okay, so just, let's just go stuff. through some, some thumb rules which I'm sure you apply to yourself and family. When I was a child, the the food safety was a much bigger concern because you didn't have proper refrigeration, proper cold storage management. Uh, even in places like New Delhi, you know, you had massive power cuts for hours and hours. 
so you know at the thumb rule was what dr gupta said that you know non veg was avoidable outside and the other thumb rule was that uh, cooked food so avoid salads uh, avoid uncooked uh, uh, the stuff which is advice that i was following when i was a child things have now changed so what would be the thumb rules that you would advise sir when when both eating out and ordering ordering online dr gupta first i think i think the thumb rule should be that the fg as i was telling you should become more proactive we have to have we have to have more number of people who should be doing surveillance of these more frequently at these once a month and then they should be testing this food and doing it themselves because you can't stop people and children eating outside especially with online and all a thing will continue to do like this and of course with refrigeration and all this another thing but when you are talking about the food coming from outside we have to be more careful with the government regulation which is required of course personally i would personally suggest all the children must take so much outside food but they are taking you can't stop them okay so our thumb rule would be a government agency fda should have more number of people staff by area by area locality by locality cities by cities and then they should keep on doing the screening on a regular basis and that will keep these people sitting on the edge who are cooking the food okay okay because, because you know because when when we order online these is doctor that should be the okay. so otherwise now a tragedy has happened this is not illness this is death of a 19 year old girl so tragedy has taken place now whatever we discuss here is of is of no meaning to her family so what do we take away from this now i don't yet know because i like i said there are millions tens of millions of people right now who will be eating out tonight tens of millions whether literally is from a from a the sunday guardian foundation presents 